Okay, now let's move to the topic which says total number of ways of selection of distinct items. So now we are uh, talking about total number of ways of selection, total number of ways of selection, right? So it is divided in particular categories. First of all, we'll talk about the distinct elements and then we'll also talk about the identical uh, elements. So it says number of ways of selecting one or more item that is at least one. So when you, whenever you find something of the sort, one or more, it is equivalent to saying at least one, right? These two things are same, at least one or one or more. From a group of indistinct items is, you have to remember this as a formula first of all. So add this to your formula list. So this is a formula that you people have to use. So it says if there are indistinct items and, and remember this formula is for only distinct items. So if there are indistinct items, then the total number of selections, total number of ways, total number of ways of selection is nothing but 2 raised to power n minus 1. So now let us think of how we are getting this answer. And what do we mean by total number of ways of selection? So selection, ki agar hum baat kare, if we talk about the selection front, so selection could be that you, you picked nothing, zero selection. There could be one selection, there could be two, three, four, and you can also choose n out of n. So now let us go about how to, how do we do this? So out of n elements, you select zero, that could be done in nc zero ways. You select one element that could be done in nc1. This could be done in nc2. Similarly, if I talk about this nc4, and this could be done in nc n ways. So answer would be what? Which will add all of them. So if I add them, let's see what will become nc0, nc1, plus nc2, plus nc3, right? And nc n. And if you see this properly, this is a binomial expansion, sum of binomial coefficients. So what is the property of sum of binomial coefficient that it becomes? Yes, it is 2 raised to power n. So people who are not comfortable with the binomial, so just try and work around for this. Expand this binomially and put x equal to 1. This is just a hint that I have given to you people. But you should remember this particular formula. So there's a sum of coefficients, binomial coefficients we know is 2 raised to power n. If you see in this particular case, I have included nc0. So nc0 means the case of, so nc0 is nothing but case of no selection. Case of no selection. That means you n did not select anything out of the n items. So you do not want this because you are talking about at least one selection, right? So for at least one, you should take this to this side. So if I talk about this nc1, nc2 up till ncn. So this answer comes out to be 2 raised to power n minus 1 because nc0 is nothing but 1. So this is the particular answer we are talking about and that has become a formula for us. Right? This is the formula. The other way of thinking this problem is an, again very important. Why I am uh, going with the uh, derivation of this is because this is a very interesting way of how you think on the problems. Other way, so the b part, the other way of thinking this is, let's say, so there are n items, right? Let me write... Uh, item 1 as a1, a2, a3, a4. So these are all the items that we are talking about. They are all distinct, right? And you want to find the number of ways in which they can be selected. So every item here has two ways. Either it could be selected or it could not be selected. Same here, two options, two options, two options. And this also has two options, selected, not selected, right? So if we go ahead with our dash problem, remember dash, basic dash problem, so every, so this is dashes, number of options A1 has, number of options A2 has. So it has two options, it has two options, two options. So every dash will be filled by 2 and 2 will be multiplied how many times? N times. So it comes out to be 2 raised to power N. And then we will subtract 1 out of this. Why? Because there will be one sequence. One sequence will be such. One sequence will be there in which all of them will be not selected, not selected, not selected, not selected, not selected. So we will have to subtract that one sequence because we want at least one selection should be there. So these are the two methods by which you can actually prove this formula. And this is both of them are very important. You should actually know how we have solved them. All right, let's apply this into a particular problem now. Problem now will become very easy. So the problem says you want to invite five of your friends to a party. Okay. And in how many ways can you invite at least one of them? So at least one of them. So there are five friends to be invited, five friends. So, so for example, five friends are there. You want to invite. It is not given that you will definitely invite all the five. So now again, every friend has an option that he could be invited and he could be not be invited. Again, two options, two options, two options, two options. 
so it should be 2 raised to the power 5 but you want at least one of them to be invited so that means you will do minus 1 because there would be one sequence which will say not invited not invited not invited your answer is nothing but 31 is your particular answer to this problem and this is how you can apply this concept in these kind of questions